Okay, so now we're underneath the car here. We're gonna. This is a front engine, rear wheel drive car. So how you separate the transmission from the engine and from the uh, drive shaft is what I'm gonna cover right now, real quickly. So what we're doing right now is we're draining the uh, manual transmission fluid right here. That's dripping out right now. So you want to do that procedure, and then you want to come over here and. Um, Lubricate these bolts right here at the differential and uh, loosen these up. You can use the handbrake to tighten up the drive shaft and then rotate the um, drive shaft and then do the other two. There's four bolts on each side, so I've already got the other two off. So, all we have to do now is take these two off right here. And we also have another uh, insulator right here. Another mounting uh, bushing right here, so we're going to take that off as well. And with, with those out, we should be able to drop the drive shaft, and then that was separated from the manual trans. Here's the drive shaft out of the car, it came out pretty easily. It weighs 14 pounds, so it's pretty easy to maneuver in and out. So we can inspect the bushing right here and see if this is in good shape, it appears to be. Everything else seems to be pretty tight, so we should be able to reuse this. Now, at this stage, since I'm kind of doing this as I go here, um, I haven't decided if I'm going to, if we're going to put the motor into the transmission, have a have a special fabricated, custom fabricated mounting plate, and keep the manual transmission and just bolt the motor to the transmission, or do we want to take our electric motor and stick it straight into our drive shaft? So, see, this has a splined. Uh, opening there and um, with it, whether or not that's a standard size or not we're going to have to determine that here shortly but um, if we can it would be super sweet to just stick our motor right into there now there's also ways that you can do a slip joint um, they have an adapter basically it's this piece right here the piece I'm moving that would basically go into the motor designed to go into the motor and then it has this this kind of uh, yoke right here so all we'd have to do is separate it right here it would basically replace this piece right here and go straight into the motor so it doesn't even matter if this lines up or not we can just remove this this section section right here and then just keep this part right here and make our joint right here at the uh, at the joint here so that's another option. Of course, it depends on where it's located in the car, if we can get the motor back enough, because remember, this is where the transmission is. So if the motor has to be about the same size as the transmission, which it may be, it may in fact be. So we're going to take some measurements and find out, see what we can do here. So here's what it looks like with the drive shaft out right here. It's kind of interesting. We have a little bit of room right here between the gas tank and the frame of the car and the subframe here. It's like if I've seen some really compact motors that are more like um, more of a donut shape as opposed to a watermelon. I'm going to look at the possibility of putting like maybe one of those motors right here because we actually got some room right here. That might be an option. That way we lose the drive shaft entirely. But that's that's just a more of a dream. Okay, so I got the transmission supported with a jack right here, and I've already uh, begun to loosen up the bolts up here. I took some other stuff out of the way. Not totally necessary, but it makes it a lot cleaner, a lot easier to get to those bolts. You have to take out the starter. That's the the tricky part there. And then there's um, so there's two two 12 millimeter bolts, and there's four 14 millimeter bolts. Two nuts and two bolts that you have to take out. So six total. And you can see it's already there's already a crack line there. You can see where it's already gap, gapped open about an eighth of an inch or so. You can see right there, it's split apart. So now what we're going to do? You can see our brackets. I took the brackets out here after it was supported. You can see that it's already starting to lower down right here. So all we have to do now. Just continue to lower it down, kind of gently slide it back, put some blocking here for it to rest on as it comes down, and that will be that. So as we continue to lower it down, I know something interesting about this particular car. The engine mounts are these rubber, basically blocks right there. You can see that's the la that side, and there's another one over there, and then there's just a the transmission mount. So there's just three. 
But as you see, is if I lift it up here, see how that's moving? The thing is just basically resting on there. So as I lower this down, it uh don't really need to don't really need to, to loosen the uh the motor mounts is what I'm getting at here is because it's already uh they're just resting on there. Basically just gravity is holding them in place. Right, so here's the manual transmission out of the car. You can basically slide it out the front. And uh, it's actually not that heavy. I mean, I, I haven't weighed it yet, but it's pretty easy to pick up. I can't be with you more than 40, 45 pounds, 50 pounds maybe. And so that's what that leaves us here. Now what we got to do is uh, lower our car down and then use our, our shop crane to uh, pull the block out here. We're ready to go ahead and take the uh, engine out of the car now. Got everything set up here. So I loosened up all the bolts and everything. I had to jack the car up a little bit here to clear it, clear the forks here because it's so low. So I got the jack there in the middle just to raise it up a little bit. But we should be able to do it here. I measured everything. I also shorten up the uh, the chain that's on the um, shop crane here. Shorten that up a little bit. Give us more room to work with here. So I loosened up all the bolts down here for all the brackets and everything. So everything is loose. I took out a couple bolts on each side. So it's down to just basically two bolts on each side. We'll probably take the brackets off. We'll probably cut it off right here. That way make it nice and narrow. Or at least on one side. Probably, yeah, probably both. But I have it loosened down here as well. So. so anyway, we're ready to go. Once you have some of the load on the crane, you can pretty much take all the brackets, all the bolts off and everything. And just kind of work it away. First I loosened it here at the engine, both sides. And then I pulled it off and then lifted the thing up a little bit and then twisted the plates off. So I got those plates, the actual mounting plates are now separated. So it's totally on the crane now. There they are right there. And here is the engine out of the car completely. That opens up some space. Lots of room for batteries. I think our motor, hopefully, We'll go down there where the transmission was. That's the plan. And then all this is battery and other stuff. With room to spare. Might even have a frunk. I've got pretty much everything stripped out of it. The only thing we're going to do is uh, at some point we'll take out the heater core. And um, maybe some of this wiring we don't need. But for now I'm leaving all the stock wiring in place. And even though there's like, you know, fuel injection stuff and all that. Half of it is not, I don't even need. But... For now, for simplicity, we'll leave it in place. And uh, minus the fuel tank, that's the only thing that needs to come out. So this is what our weight is right here. About 1,100 pounds, or 1099, I guess. Yep, about 1,100. So that's our number. So now, that's basically our baseline. So now what we need to do is uh, make our batteries fit in here and keep that weight balanced as it was stock. So I did a bunch of research and I found out a bunch of information about what we're going to do here on the project. And I went ahead and ordered a bunch of parts for the, for the project. So um, I think I got it all figured out here. I'll go into detail about that later when those, when those uh, parts arrive. But basically the overview is... We're going to have an air-cooled motor, AC, it's going to be full regen, it's going to be a Curtis motor and controller, and it's going to be going right down there, it's going to be, um, it's, only, it's only 7 inches diameter, so it's going to easily fit in that tunnel there, it's about 9 or 10 inches there, of uh, width, and uh, that's where the motor is going to go, and it's going to go directly into, they actually make a little, a little key, just this piece right here, they make a, a keyed, slot that goes specifically into the motor and then you just have to all you have to do is just take this assembly apart right here and then put a new um uh whatever this piece is called that the four 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 way uh connector in here to make these u-joints basically uh hook up and that should be our connection point that's the most critical part there because that's what connects the new to the old once we get that connection established 
everything else is already there and ready to go. So we won't have to mess with anything. Brake system will be exactly stock. Um, this will have regen braking, so we'll be able to either add a sensor to the brake pedal. And we'll be, oh, and another thing too is that this system's totally customizable too. So that's one of the nicest things about it. So we'll be able to play around with stuff. If we want to put a, a brake paddle, like if we want to do like a steering wheel paddle, we'd be able to put like a paddle for the regen breaker, or we could have maybe a handle, or we could put a little, the, the actual sensor I'm getting is designed to go onto the brake pedal, but I, it just kind of opened up all kinds of design possibilities so that we could we modify that, we make it, you know, whatever we want to do it. So maybe a paddle behind the, the wheel might be better. So we're going to look at that kind of stuff, all kinds of cool, cool choices here. Um, so what else, let's say, so this, so there'll be um, all the components we're going to need. So we're going to need a vacuum pump to keep, to carry our to, to keep our power boost boost for the um, the brakes. So we got that part on order. We got the uh, um, cooling system is actually going to be very simple. Everything's going to be air cooled with the exception of the controller. The controller needs cooling. So we have, so I bought a chill plate that comes as an option, and then we're going to have a little cooling system, and we'll have that thing totally controlled. We'll be able to program that too. And set the exact temperature that we want the thing to turn on, the water pump, and then the fan. Um, we're going to have a charger. It's going to be, um, not exactly sure where we're going to put it, but um, we'll be, uh, that's going to be a programmable charger as well. So here's what we're going to be doing as far as the battery pack. Um, these are 15 modules out of a Fiat 500E. This weighs uh, 399 pounds. And um, what we've done is we've divided into three groups of modules. So this group right here is going to be our 96 volt. Well, actually, technically it's 101, but we'll be using a 96 volt system nominally with a peak of 111 uh, volts when it's at full charge. And the, the motor is rated up to 130 volts, although it's technically it's nominally it's a 96. So we'll be well within the parameters of the uh, the motor. So even though it's a little bit higher than 96 at 101, it will still be well within the range of the motor. So that's that's basically what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a 96 volt system. Each of these groupings are 96 volts. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this group right here in the back of the car. And then these two are going to be in the front of the car. So... 1600 pounds minus 500 down to 1100 and now we're putting 550 back on so basically we're only adding 50 pounds to the car which i which i'm very excited about this is like extremely extremely good news i was worried that we might be a little bit heavier but but 50 pounds over that's that's about as ideal as it gets right here so i'm very excited about this and we're putting two-thirds of the module in the front and it's going to be basically right here right in the engine compartment because all the other stuff's going to be tucked away and so it comes out to work out to be like basically behind the front wheel and then that pack right here that grouping of uh, modules right there all of that's going to go back here so we're going to yank out our fuel tank which is right here we're going to yank that out next here and we're going to put two of the six cell modules down in the fuel tank and then we're going to put three of the modules right here and it, they're, they're only six six uh six inches high and so it's 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 lower than this thing right here so we'll be able to put a little plate right there and just hide all that some black carpeting it would totally disappear plus with the headrest in place and everything and actually if you look at how the car was stocked if you go back to the photos the video before you can see that there was not you know there was a lot of plastic covering in there anyway so it's really not going to look all that different it's going to look pretty much stock and our trunk is going to be bigger because without the spare in, we're going to take this stuff out today. It's the next thing we're going to work on, we're going to take the fuel tank out. We'll have actually have a full-size trunk too. And the battery uh, locations are going to be right here just in front of the rear axle. So basically all of our weight is going to be between the axles. I mean, there's not going to be nothing out here. It's actually going to be less weight back here because there's no muffler back here. So there's actually going to be very little weight back on the outer extremities of the car. There's not going to be anything much in the front. The radiator, air conditioning, all that stuff that was dangling out front, all that's going to be gone. So there's going to be nothing out front here. Whatever radiator we have is going to be a small little radiator back here. 
Oh, and also our battery is going to be tucked way down as low as I can get on the subframe down here. So I think we'll be able we're going to do like about three stacks of them right here. So um, going to be interesting. I'm very excited. And so uh, let's go ahead and continue on. So we're going to go ahead and remove this fuel tank now. And to get to it, we have to take this whole subframe out to get to it. And then we're going to put some cells in, in its place. And um, so one of the things that's, that's uh, you know, it seems like it would be kind of a complex procedure, but not so bad. Since we've already had the drive shaft removed down here, ugh, right there, it's already basically disconnected. So all we really have to do here, um, and one of the nice things about it is uh, all of the adjustments for the for the alignment are all on the subframe. So these two lateral links right here, this one right here, and then this one right here, that's where your adjustments are, and that's all mounted to the subframe. So all we really have to do here is disconnect our brake line. And this has a nice connection right here. It's it's not the it's not this type of connection. These kind of connections can be really difficult to work with if you don't have a brake line wrench and if the thing's got paint on it like, like, this, like this one has, you can possibly strip those. But we won't have to disconnect it there. We're, we're gonna disconnect it here. It has this nice, like uh, much more solid, easier on off connection right here. So we should be able to just pull that, disconnect our brake line. It should be real easy to, to reestablish that, disconnect it and reconnect it. And then we have to disconnect our brake, our, uh, our handbrake cable. And then um, we'll disconnect our shock absorber up here, those three bolts per side. And then we'll take out the, the front link right here, which is a, it's at a fixed position. And then there's two bolts per side, two of them right there. And then the other two are right, uh, right there, basically. And, uh, per side, and then we should be able to just drop this guy down. As I loosened it up down here, the front link, speedometer cable is off, handbrake cable is off, brake is uh, loosened up. These have all been removed up here on both sides. So now, the next thing you need to do is there's only just four bolts holding this in on each side, so eight total. So there's two right here, 17 millimeter. And then there's the other two right here. I've got this supported right here in the middle. The piece of 4x4 four four going across, pretty much straight on with the axle. Seems to have it balanced pretty well. Once you do that, you can finish taking off the brake lines right here. I've reduced, I've taken all the bolts off now. As you can see, it's starting to come down right now. So basically just lower it down. Continue to lower it down and... Turns out taking off the back bumper makes it a lot easier. So we went ahead and did that. That way we can just roll this thing out without any intrusions. All right, so with that out of the way, now we can come in here and get our fuel tank out. That's what it looks like right there. It's only six gallons. Don't expect much out of it. But should be enough room for to put a couple modules up there. All right, so. That's the gas tank out. It's kind of a weird shape right here, so I can't really put batteries. I mean, I can't put as much as I would like to, but I, I will be able to put the two that I want to, so it shouldn't be a problem. But there'll be lots of extra space. It's just like nooks and crannies that I just can't fill with anything, so. But we'll be able to put two of the 6L right here, probably across. 
right above that brake line. Using the angle grinder, took out some of the exhaust hangers right here and some other junk on the trunk. Little metal areas right here. Took that off. Took that off. And then took that off as well. So it opens up things a little bit more. I think I'll take out that little bracket right there because that was for the fuel tank. There's another one up here. I'm going to take those out too.